Welcome to the round of South Carolina here at Darlington Super Speedway in Darlington, South Carolina. Eddie Schimped cars your pole sitter with Tristan Wilhoyt second, Kenny Maya third, who openly does not like this trek. Trek Tauger is going for four wins in a row. If he does, or yeah, four wins in a row. If he does that, he will tie Nick Mace's all-time winning record in a row. Uh, Dornan Bouchard starts 5th, Ray Hall 6th, Shepard 7th, Moss, great starting spot in 8th, Freeze 9th, Arndt 10th, Arndt finally outqualifies his um, main championship rival so far, Noah Hart, 11th to Allen, 12th to the aforementioned Hart, 13th to Maddie Mai, 14th to Pericles, 15th to Ace Vito, 16th to Angel, 17th Monaco, 18th Griffin, 19th to Bashalia, 20th to Jones, 21st to Dodd, 22nd to Curtis, 23rd to Brock, 24th to Gurian, 25th to Davidson, 26th to Fitzwater, bad start for Baskinger, and 27th Caldwell, 28th, Halleck, 29th, 30th, and your typical normal people, pretty much 30th on down, Dunbar, Cohen, Wallace, Vanderpash, Lamas, Dormitory, and Dover. With that being said, there is a lot of concern around the Menervini and the um, Action Terror Brigade. Um, Action Terra doesn't have any money, doesn't have any sponsorships, so it's expected that Action Terra could be in their last race of the season so far. Likewise for one of the Menervini cars. They do say that they are going to keep running their other car, the 77, and it is expected that uh, Shara will be back next week. We're not sure, though, about that. Um, we are hearing that there might be a couple, that they might do one more race. And the two Team Flame cars that are going to be coming out of the grid might round out, uh, might have to qualify in, in Daytona. However, outside of that, there isn't a whole lot going on. Um, championships heating up as well. Let's go to the race. Before we even get going, Talia Wallish has an issue on pit road, so tough break for Wallish. It's an all-CJ racing front row, though, between... Eddie Schimpadkar and the 25 of Tristan Wilhoyt. Wilhoyt's looking to recover after his snafu at Road America. The mechanical snafu and green flag is out and away we go here at Darlington. And it looks like it's a good start from everybody. We know that tire wear is going to be a factor in this race. However, we're not sure how the race is really going to play itself out. Is, is Will oh, Wilhoyt's in the fence already. And that holds up Tauger. Tauger gets into him there. And luckily, we'll keep going, though. Looks like Bouchard's trying to get underneath Maya for a second, and we got a crash in the back, I think. No, we don't, actually. It was just a bunch of cars getting in the wall. Three wide doesn't really work here. And a lot of beating and banging there. Everybody just trying to stay off each other, because, like I said, three wide doesn't work. John Art has fallen drastically through the field as a bunch of cars are on the apron trying to keep off each other. Will Hoyt's also lost a couple of spots as well. And this is, again, another great move by Noah Hart, because Hart now has a huge lead. Oh, Will Hoyt's in the fence again! So, just kind of shows that you've got to be able to keep off the wall here. And, oh, there's John Hart nearly clobbering him. So, at the front of the field, it's still two CJ Racing cars, except now Bouchard's taken over second position. Third is Aiden Shepard. Fourth goes to Tauger. Fifth goes to Moss. And sixth, Myatt drops from third to sixth. Uh, remember, Trek Tauger is going for his fourth win in a row here, and if he does that, he joins a very elusive club with only Nick Mays. And Will Hoyt, after four laps, is all the way dropped back to last. Something isn't right with his car. It's not handling right as he just keeps getting into the wall. And Will Hoyt's bad luck it looks like it's going to continue here. However, maybe he's able to solidify it because he looks a lot quicker than some of these cars back here. Look at Roman Rahal, he's really slower on track here. So now you're going to see a bunch of cars snake by him on the inside. Like I said, this track isn't exactly the faint of heart on cars on the outside. Rahal catches the wall now. And it's just, you've got to be oh so careful up on the high line like what Pericles is doing. He had to back way off the throttle there as well because of Rahal. So you just got to be oh so careful here. And that's just one of the hard parts of this track, is you just got to hold on for dear life. Bobby Jones now is going to be on the outside. We're going to see if he can actually hold it up there without catching the wall. And that's not going to happen either. So it looks like cars are getting into the wall left and right the moment they get put on the outside. They're all getting their Darlington stripes today, as this is probably the toughest oval we go to all season. 
and just look at the amount of speed you lose if you catch that wall. It's quite frankly impressive how much speed you lose. Bouchard now has caught his teammate Padcar for the lead of the race, and this is where things get pretty interesting because Bouchard's never won a race before. Padcar tends to do well on the ovals. However, we're going to see what Bouchard's going to be able to try and do here with Padcar. Will they just hold in line for a while? Because the moment you get caught in that outside line, it seems like you're going straight into the fence. As now you've got Vince Freeze and Alex Allen doing battle back there, and that's allowing Matty Myatt and Noah Hart to close in. But at the front of the field, or at the, uh, the third place car is now Trek Tauger, and ooh, Tauger's flirting with that wall there as Moss is trying to look underneath him. Like I said, you don't want to do that too often, especially in entering three and four, the most complex corner, oval corner of the season. Tristan Wilhoyt is a lot faster than the cars that are running in front of him right now. However, Will Hoyt is stuck behind them because this track is so difficult to pass and get a run on here. And the moment you do, the car you pass gets into the fence. So this is all a pit strategy race, I think, really. You just got to play your cards right because tires do wear out very fast here. They're almost a full second slower than when they started the race. Here comes Noah Hart looking down low on the one cars. Ooh, car got the wall in the back. Ooh, actually, Tauger caught the wall as well somewhere. And we're going to see Myatt's going to hold the position, though, as well. We're going to take a look and see what happened to Tauger, actually, because it looks like he lost a couple spots. Becca Moss would make a move underneath Tauger, and once again, we're going to see the outside really play a bugaboo there, and he would catch the outside wall there. And actually, because he was on the outside there, he also would get to the wall again, I think, way up top here. Not too bad, but he would catch it here and he would get off the wall right there and slot in right behind Noah Hart. And so he dropped from third to ninth, lost six positions just because he caught the wall. And now you've got Kenny Myatt in third position, and that's going to force Moss to the high line. And Moss is going to clip the wall there and lose all those spots as well. Although Moss did a better job getting off the wall. However, everybody else seemed to have a bit more speed than when Tauger had it. Noah Hart would go underneath Maddie Myatt here, and uh, Myatt would lose a couple of spots because she would go on the high line here. However, Myatt surprisingly would back way out of the throttle in order to not hit the wall. However, she would lose a ton of spots because of it. Battle for the lead now as Dornan Bouchard goes underneath his teammate Eddie Shim Padcar for the lead, and Padcar is going to get up into the marbles and start sliding around but wouldn't catch the wall. Or actually, right there, he did. So Padcar would catch the wall and slow him down a bit there. However, he was going to lose the spot anyway. Moshe Gurian has had a lot of handling issues with his car as well. So Gurian is going to almost go a lap down here on lap 16. And this is where the race really tends to conglomerate up is because it's very difficult for lead lap cars to pass. Some of the lap cars around here, so... You're going to see what Bouchard's going to have to... Bouchard's not one of the more aggressive guys out there on the track. And Bouchard's going to have to be... And here comes Padcar flying onto the scene. And this is where things get pretty interesting because they're not going to try and beat the 88. Or the 73, that is. And because of this, here comes car number 9. On the out... Uh, right up to the pack here. And actually, it's a little further back. You've got Alex Allen and Noah Hart closing in as well. So this just reconglomerates the front of the field. And here we go again. This is where things get pretty interesting because everybody is conglomerating back up here. And this is where things just get very dicey with cars all trying to pass each other, possibly. John Hart has had a wondrous start to the season. However, recently his season has kind of taken a nosedive, since the American 700 for that matter. And now you're going to, oh, Bichelle is maybe going to get into the wall here. Hope he can keep off it. Looks like he's not going to off the corner. No, he doesn't. But he did a better job than some other guys. But anyway, Arndt needs to get positions. That's the only thing is he needs to be in the points if he's going to try and chase down Noah Hart, who has been absolutely murdering him in the last couple of races here. He hasn't won a race yet, Noah Hart hasn't this year. However, Hart's been a lot more consistent than Hart. Oh, Tauger catches the wall in the back! And that was on his own accord, because Angel was not underneath him before that took place. So, uh, Tauger is doing his best to try and get four in a row. However, I don't think he's going to get it 
the way he's racing right now, because that uh, Zeus car doesn't look very fast. But like we said, Dorn and Bouchard doesn't look very willing to pass the 73 either, because he knows that if he does, it's going to put him at a disadvantage as well, and well, the 73 seemingly is guarding the inside pretty well. I'm waiting to see one of- oh, looks like Bouchard is going to make a move here. Watch the 73 now. 73 already doesn't handle very well. 73 is going a lamp down, and it looks like the 73 is actually not going to hit the wall. What a miracle that is. Meanwhile, while this is all going down, the 8 car and the 9 are battling for second position here, and the 8's going to overcook it, exiting turn number 2 here, get into the wall, and the 9's going to get by it. And the 51 and 18 get held up because of it. So, very interesting to see the uh, 8 get through this here. And it looks like the 51's got to take evasive action to avoid loses a spot because of it. The 11's on the outside there, but somehow doesn't hit the wall. What a drop-off in speed for Kyle Bichelia. Bichelia is right now really torched his tires here. And he's got to be really careful with how he's racing the rest of this race. And Ryan Griffin, they were running pretty well at the start of this race. They've both fallen back because they've both caught the wall. Noah Hart has been looking to try and take third away from Eddie Schimpadkar, make it on an FBR 2-3. However, um, Padkar's not making his life that easy right now. Aiden Shepard would catch the wall all by himself and fall down to, I believe, 19th position, 20th position, actually. Kenny Might has slowly reeled in the 88 car, and the 88 has to deal with Benjamin Dover right here, and... The 88 is now going to try and make moves on some of these cars here. However, he would be held up a tad by Dover. However, Dover, if Dover catches the wall, this could be a very easy pass for Myatt. It's going to be a very easy pass for Myatt, actually. And now it's down to the 9 versus the 88. A young star in Dorn and Bouchard versus the wily veteran Kenny Myatt, who doesn't like this track, might I add. And now Bouchard's up to lap Chase Dunbar in the 22 car, and this is where, like I said, things get pretty interesting because, like I said, this track doesn't really separate out as much when you get caught behind lap cars here, and it looks like the 88's already trying to go for a spot here. As long as the 9's smart, which he actually wasn't all that smart about that, um... The 9 should have been able to get a pretty quick run there off the corner. However, he lost a bit of time because the 22 had to back way out of the throttle. However, the leaders would pit on this very lap as the 22 stays out. And a bunch of cars are now bringing it down. Looks like Monaco's staying out. And this is where tire strategy is going to be a humongous factor in this race. A couple more cars down. Looks like two Zio's cars and Maya and, uh, excuse me, Ace Vio are stay staying out. So here we go, pit stop strategy. We were mentioning how Tristan Wilhoy was going to be looking at a lot of strategy cards to play later. Keep in mind, he's pitted early. So now we're gonna see what Wilhoy's gonna be able to do, excuse me again. However, Kenny Myatt and Noah Hart, as you're gonna see, they're going to repair a lot of damage to the 88 car and he's going to lose a ton of time on the pits. Will Hoyt uh, had to get a lot of damage repaired as well, so Myatt now, Myatt and Hart in the two FBR cars are leading this race. However, Sean Angel, who I think pitted a lap early with... No, Jones got lapped, by the way. Angel's going to take over third, but now Kenny Myatt, a driver who doesn't like this track, is in the lead of the race. An interesting thing is the next car to be lapped would be Trek Tauger, actually, at this rate. So Tauger is going to have to hope for a yellow if he's going to keep that four-race streak alive. Or that streak of winning alive. However, lucky for Tauger, he would get a yellow. As a couple of cars are coming out of the pits, Bouchard has to take evasive action to avoid the 11. Hits the wall and spins out on the safer wall. And brings out the yellow. Nearly taking out the um, 24 as well. So now the big question is, is will Myatt be able to lap Calgary? It doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Moss is going to get lapped at this rate. However, Myatt is going to be the leader, I think, coming back as long as he doesn't hit the wall. Hart was catching him, too, at the end of that as well. So a bunch of cars are now lapped because they had to, they actually had to get some damage pulled off. So the cars that haven't hit the wall are the only ones, or that haven't really hit the wall are the only ones on the lead lap. 
So, led by Kenny Might and Noah Hart, two of the more elderly, or, well, older, I don't want to say elderly, but older drivers on the grid. And now we're back to green as Becca Moss is going down. This is where things get interesting because you've got lead lap cars on the inside, or on the outside, and lap cars on the inside. So now it becomes incredibly critical to get to the inside as soon as possible. Because, oh, Hart catches the wall! And that's another one in the fence there is, oh boy, we got cars all over the place trying to keep off the wall. And luckily, I think a lot of them did. However, a lot of the lead lap cars took right side damage there from hitting the fence. Angel did not, but Maya is still in the lead of this race. Noah Hart would get back up into the fence here, coming off of turn four. That gives the position to Monaco and Allen, I believe, down the straightaway here. No, maybe not. As Hart slams the door on Monaco there to just try and hold the speed there. Hart sliding wide, but this is where things just get really critical here as it's very close off the corner. Like I said, this track isn't the biggest thing on the planet. Up in front of him, you got cars all over the place. Hart's in the fence again. So you're seeing Hart just slowly slide down the order here as he can't seem to get off the wall. And now Hart's just going to lose a ton of spots. This is what John Hart wants to see. See Hart just get struggling for grip out there. As, oh, three wide on Darlington's a bad idea, and it puts Hart in the fence again. There's Tristan Wilhoyt, a number of laps down, by the way. Car in the wall in front. That's uh, Vander Pesch, actually, in the fence. So we've just got cars just trying to keep off the wall, and when you get these cautions, a lot of times that's what happens. Meanwhile, Kenny Mike slowly but surely picking off lap cars, but oh, that's a crash in front of him! The 48's around! And oh, he's gonna come down, and there's a bunch of cars coming! There's Monaco in it! The 9th, the 51's in it, the 8's in it, the 35's in it, and we got a stack up, boys! Here we go, as everybody slams on the brakes trying to avoid. Look at Chris Dodd on the inside just passing everybody. That's what you gotta do here. And that was a big stack up there. I saw Ace Vito, I think, coming out of the pits. And I saw that incident taking place right in front of it. Right before my eyes, I saw that. Yeah, this was Lamas. He was fighting for the lead lap, actually, here. And Lamas comes back up, or Lamas has nowhere to go. He gets into the fence. Maya just has to dump him, simply, or has to just tap him around there. And then all of a sudden, there's Monaco in it. And then you're just going to see a car is all over the place, just trying to avoid. And there's really not a lot of room to miss anybody. Oh, there was a crash further back with one of the Menervinis and Tristan Wilhoyt, it looks like. Yeah, and here's what happened. Wilhoyt gets into the fence trying to avoid Dunbar. Dunbar caught the fence there, and then the 78 just goes around in avoidance. On board with Alex Allen, and he was, this is a shame, because he was having a pretty good run here. And you're just going to see cars in front of him just start scrambling. And, well, actually, not too much in front of him. And he goes around, and all of a sudden, you're just going to see a bunch of cars just slide in here. Because there's simply nowhere to go. We're going to look at one of the avoidances of the year. This is Chris Don. The caution's out because of the incident here, and everybody's starting to take it very calm and easy here, but it's still race back to the line. And then you see a bunch of cars hit the wall trying to miss here, and then all of a sudden you're just going to see a bunch of cars there. Don makes the right move, goes by, and gains a ton of spots. On board with Noah Hart now as we're on. We're just going to see what happens. There's where Dunbar goes around. That was one of the Pertex put him into the fence there trying to miss. And essentially, he has to get into the wall to avoid the incident there. And Tim and Tauger, well, Tauger, I think, hit a car. And Hart hit the wall to avoid it. Kenny Mai would lead the field back to the green. Uh, John Hart's on the wrong line, so I'm not sure why he's up there. But I guess they put him up there. Uh, second place is actually Sean Angel. Green flag is out again here at Darlington. And as you can see, there are in a lot of cars left in this race. And now with a bunch of slow lap cars, who knows what's going to happen. Especially with more lead lappers on the outside. Looks like Myatt's actually going to maybe slot in here. Yeah, right there. I think he's got to. He's got to slot in now. Yeah, he's going to the five. Let's him in. And here we go again. Who's going to hit the wall? Who's not? DJ Curtis from fourth hits the fence. 
And that's going to make it three wide off the corner. The 05 gets into him. And the 05 with one of the best saves I've seen in a while there. He's going to come up and nearly clock out the 17 of Griffin there. But luckily, that was not as bad as it could have been. However, the battling is quite fierce up the order here as the two and the five are doing battle. Second place now is still Sean Angel. Third is all the way back with Trek Tauger. Of course, he'd be running third. I'm guessing he could be on his way to his fourth win, possibly. He's recovered quite nicely from a lot of early race drama. The five is near. Watch out for the five here. The 83, the five caught the wall, and the 83 is going under him. This could be big here as... Uh, Looks like Grayson Ace Vito also is up there. Ace Vito. Ooh, that was a good move by Ray Hall to slot down the inside. Ace Vito catches the wall, but it's going to be another battle here down the straightaway here. Meanwhile, at the front of the field, Kenny Myatt's loving this. He does not like this track at all. And he's right now got a pretty sizable lead right here. Right now, though, you're seeing Benjamin Dover, and well, there's Noah Hart. He hasn't been able to get by any of these slow lap cars. Dover and Will Hoyt, uh, which is a darn shame because Hart's faster than both of them. And so Maya now is actually going to have to deal with the slow Zayden Davidson car, who is slow. Ooh, car in the fence in the back again. That's Brock. Now one of the lap cars, just one lap down. He's battling with actually John Arndt, I believe. Arndt wants to see Hart held up as much as possible here because that's going to put Art back on the, or well, that'll put him on the equal lap with Noah Hart. However, John Art, what you don't do is get into the fence there entering three and four, and that puts him in the fence trying to avoid it. So the Darlington Stripe has been absolutely terrible today. The car's on the outside, the track just doesn't have any grip. Mayan has now let a couple lap cars go by him. However, that's putting Angel as a serious threat for Mayan. And Myatt is about a second slower than Angel. So we are got to see what's going to happen here. I think Angel might have taken tires and Myatt hasn't. So this is where things just get pretty interesting because you got Angel and Myatt here that are vastly different speeds with each other. Although that was better lap by Myatt, so maybe it wasn't a tire thing. I wonder if he just let everybody by and that's why he lost a second. And, but now Angel seems a lot quicker than the nine. Meanwhile, the leaders are now being held up by the Tristan Wilhoyt pack now. These cars have been a bit of a nuisance, and now Angel's going to try and make a move on the 9 for the lead of the race. The 9 would just be smart to let him go here and slot in behind, I think. Although the 9's not backing out, the 9 sees a move on the outside possibly lining up here. But that ain't going to work there, boy. And this isn't going to be good for the 9, I don't think, as he's stuck behind the 5. And that's not a place where you really want to be. And three wide is neither. But Angel now is the leader of the race. And Sean Angel would begin to open up a rather large lead here on Myatt. However, I think they're on a little bit different tire strategies here. They pit it on different times here. So Myatt could end up hitting earlier. Dodds in third. I don't know where he came from. Curtis in fourth. Bouchard fifth. Sixth is Freeze. 7th is Baskinger, and 8th is Tauger, with 9th being Becca Moss, and 10th being Maddie Myatt. 11th is Noah Hart, and that should be the end of the lead lap. Cars. Nope, Caldwell's on the lead lap. But outside of that, that's it. 12 cars. Oh, we got a crash! I see the 9 and the 3's in it! And that is a caution for sure right there, and the 9, who had been dominant today get some right side damage. Bobby Jones is trying to get by the slow 80 car. He hits him, goes around into the fence he goes, comes down the track, and that's where the nine just clobbers him there. And the nine would take a lot of right front quarter panel damage. Doesn't look like much, but I think that was a pretty sizable hit. Here's an interesting thing. My barely beats the 81 out of the pits. However, remember the 81 is on the lead lap and my it's a lap behind him. So Myatt should be at the tail end of the lead lap, I believe. So Kenny Myatt, despite being on the tail end of the lead lap, leads a BFM 1-2 right now of Angel and Dodd. 
This is where things get interesting because can Maya get a good start? Okay, he's better to... Okay, here comes Angel immediately down low there. And Maya, it's slow. You can just see right off the line that car's got a lot of damage. And Maya is going to be fuming right now with some of the lap cars, I think. Because he had a very serious shot to win at a track he doesn't like very much. And now he is a lap down because of rather silly racing here. And this track is a bit narrow for ARCs ought to be running on. But you kind of get the point here. As a lot of cars now actually this time got a pretty decent restart here. So we're going to actually see some of these elite lap cars. I think do battle here as uh, Bouchard's trying to go underneath Dodd. And here we go again. Bouchard, remember, he was leading earlier in this race, and now he's just trying to do battle with these guys up here. There's Angel up there as well. Dodd would begin to reel in the 81 car here, pulling away from the rest of the pack, and it could be a BFM mono a mono duel at the front of the field with um, Bouchard and a couple others kind of just hanging on here. They're going to try and see if they start doing anything silly. There are some lap cars that are going to be a problem. Dover has been an issue. I mean, he arguably caused the incident there with Jones and Myatt. No blame on Jones for that, but Dover really shouldn't have been out there, especially on a track this incessantly narrow, or unsufferably narrow. This track, there's nowhere to run. Bouchard would catch the wall from third and fall all the way down to the back of that group. So that's going to put him a long way down the running order right now. Down into sixth position as Curtis now has a run. Oh, look at this! Look at this! The 41's got a huge run on the 81 here. However, Captain Aggression's going for the pass there on the 80. And the lapped 80 car, however, Dodd is right there. The 80 catches the fence. And just got to keep it off the fence there if you're the 80. And now the 81's got to deal with the slow Menervini 78 car. Now what's Dodd going to do? Dodd's already starting to look low for the lead here. He's won one race before at Road, Atlanta, at Road America last year. And now here comes Madeline Mike and Curtis onto the scene. So now we've got a duel. We've got a big almighty battle at the front of the field. As the 78 is just trying to hang on for dear life. Just trying to stay out of everyone's way. Got to give dormitory credit because this might be his last race with the 78 car. We're not sure, though, about that. We've got under... Or we've got 10 laps to go now in this event. Or I uh, might be under that now. As Angel and um, Dot. Oh boy, this is an almighty pack stuck behind Will Hoyt. And they're going to catch them. So here we go. What is Sean Angel going to do? What is Dodd going to do? What's Curtis going to do in third? This is all happening right before their eyes. And this is a pack where you do not want anything bad to happen to you bunch of cars in the fence and it looks like all these lap cars do stay rough, preferably out of the way there is uh, Codwell's not though Codwell's holding them up a tad and this is where things just get very very cautious now if you're Sean Angel and Chris Dunn you don't have much left in this race and it's just very very critical that you do a good run here as Angel's picking off cars, but the rest of the pack is as well, because they just go up into the wall. Cars behind do. Looks like you've got um, Ryan Griffin in the fence there as well. Just can't make a mistake if you're Sean Angel, and you want to win this race. You just can't do it. you got some cars here that these guys are all battling for position as well in front of him. So at the end of this race, you could see some pretty interesting moves there. Oh, boy, you got Halleck making a move on a lead lap car. I'm sorry, that's Fitzwater. My bad. And Freeze's race is effectively done. Unless if there is a rather hilarious incident. Oh, boy. Angel's now making a move on Ace Vito. And what is Fitzwater doing? He's just passing cars left and right, and he's a lap car. Ace Vito's in the fence now. Losing positions left and right. Dodd's looking underneath Angel. I don't think he's going to make the move. Angel took a very defensive line there. That's what he's got to do. Here goes Angel making a move on Brock now. Angel's making the moves he needs to make. This is how you're going to win this race, I think, is if you're Sean Angel, you just got to make these moves 
very, very cautiously here. So you've got DJ Curtis now making a move on the 41 for second. This is a huge move. So Curtis goes to second, and I don't think you're going to be seeing the teams playing all that nice now. You're not going to see first and second play all that nice now. There's a gap down to third. Myatt's going for second now. Myatt's going for the lead. Myatt's on the apron trying to hold on to it, but isn't going to get it. And this is what Angel wants. This is what Angel wants. Clear air between him and second. Myatt tried an Maddie Myatt tried a very aggressive move down low. Didn't pay off. But I gotta give her props for trying that move. That was a very intense move, but now they're back together now. And we've already seen that the one's willing to do stuff here to try and win this race. And here goes another move by Angel, another very defensive pass. And now he's gonna take it right there. He's got it now. And this is going to be a holdup. Oh no, not good for a couple of cars there. Here comes Freeze out of the pits. Freeze is coming out of the pits there, and that's going to do it, I think. Sean Angel might have just walked into this one right here. Two laps to go for the 81, and he has the clear track. Oh, crash behind. We're going to a two-lap dash, boys. We got cars all over the place. And that's going to be a two-lap dash. And who's go, boy? We got cars all over now. Myatt's in it. Hart's in it. And this is what we're talking about now. So it's not over for Angel yet. It's not over for him. He takes the yellow, though. And this race is not done. This one was caused by Maddie Mike getting into the fence there. And around, they all start going behind her. And just everybody starts piling around here. And that would just be a pretty large wreck. So your starting order when we go back green is there's going to be Angel, Curtis, Dodd, Myatt, Baskinger, Hart, Moss, Tauger, and Bouchard are going to be the only cars out there right now. It's only the lap cars can get their uh, chance on a two-lap dash. So Ray Hall's going to finish 10th, Shepard 11th, 12th goes to Jones, 13th to Cohen, 14th to Caldwell, despite not finishing, 15th to Myatt, who wasn't going to finish either. But they are ahead of the two lap down cars. So Freeze, Arndt, Ace Vito, Brock, Fitzwater, Halleck, Davidson, Vanderpesh, Griffin, Gurian, Dormitory, Will Hoyt, Dover, Padcar, Monaco, Allen, Dunbar, Bichelia, Lamas, Pericles, and um, Wallish, who never took the green, are going to all not score points. But let's go to the two lap dash. So. For two laps, uh, to disregard the 95 there, that's only if we get another two-lap dash. All these cars have come in, got their damage beaten out. What a little bit it is, and come in for new tires. So one of these nine drivers is going to pull off a win. Remember, Trek Tauger starting all the way in the back of this group here. However, he is going for his fourth win in a row. Remember, it's a two-lap dash, though, so it's however long we can go. It's, it's going to take however long it takes to, before we get two green flag laps in a row. Green flag is out, and away we go. Oh, it looks like Angel got a great start. Don didn't. And that's going to make things very difficult, I think, for everybody else here as we are off. And here they go, entering, exiting turn number two. The cars are all over the place. Here they come down the straightaway for turn number three. All right. Oh, we got car in the fence. That's hard in the fence. Myatt's in the fence. No yellow yet. A white flag is in the air now. This isn't like other series. If there's a caution within this next lap, we will go once again for a two-lap dash. Here comes Curtis down low for the lead of the race. Remember, if there's a caution this lap, we will wind them up again. And it looks like Curtis is going to take the spot here. And, oh, Angel catches the wall there. Angel's in the fence again. DJ Curtis is going to bring it home for the win here at Darlington. Second goes to Chris Dunn. Third goes to Baskinger. Fourth to Angel. Fifth to Moss. Sixth to Bouchard. Seventh to Tauger. He's not going to get four in a row. Eighth to Hart. And ninth to Maddie Myatt. So here it is again with the top um, nine and now, so it's Curtis, Dodd, Baskinger, Angel, Moss, Bouchard, Tauger, Hart, and Myatt 
rounds out your top nine, leaving Darlington, the round of South Carolina. And that being said, it's been a pretty decent weekend, a lot of very interesting racing there, but uh, all eyes are back. We had to pause it, of course, are back for DJ Curtis after winning the race here. Great to see DJ Curtis pull off a very nice victory here. He finally got a win this season. Let's go down to your points. So, after the round of South Carolina, Noah Hurt is the points leader still. John Arn is in second. Third is Trek Tauger. Or actually, tied for third is between Bouchard and Tauger. That is, of course, a pretty tight battle, obviously. As, um, uh, remember, the next race is a um, special event, so you get 50 points for winning. So, Dodd and Angel still can technically take over, or at least tie for the point. Angel can. Angel and Baskinger, for that matter, can tie for the points lead if they win the Independence 400 next week. Um, Dodd could technically take the point lead away. Uh, Jones, Curtis, Padcar, and Freeze and Shepard are down in uh, positions there with Pericles, who hasn't done anything recently, if you ask me. Um, Pericles hasn't done anything really since uh, Brazil. He's only scored in two races this year, or three actually. As he scored at Kansas. Um, behind Pericles, you have Matty Meyer, Roman Rahal, Eric Monaco, Kenny Myatt, uh, Becca Moss, uh, Brock, Roush, Michelia, Halleck, Allen, Ace Vito, um, Vincent Allen, who will get another shot for points for the part-time championship next week. Griffin, Lamas, Davidson, Dover, Shawrock, Gurian, Vanderpesh, Fitzwater, Dormitory, Wallace, Codwell, Cohen. Uh, Cohen, of course, scores points. Dunbar, Saber, Durbin, Perkins, Shelley, Johan Arndt, and Will Hoyt still on zero. So leaving this race, we honestly do not know what the qualifying system for Daytona will be. Apparently, Arkansas didn't exactly like the way that qualifying went down at the American 700. They didn't like the fact that they locked in all the full-time cars, so they're going to reevaluate that. Uh, we don't know how many cars are going to be locked in. It, there will be a number uh, leading up to this day. I think they might even have fans pull in on that, too, but it's going to be less than 36 uh, out of that group. So more part-time cars will be able to attempt. But we will see you next week in Daytona.